Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. I got some bad news for you. Oh, no. Paul McCartney's dead. Oh. Who? Paul McCartney. I've heard of him. He's with the Beatles. Four guys from Liverpool. They say they're pretty good. Huh. Well, maybe he's not exactly dead. We'll tell you the details and more on this story on the next Men Are So Smart. Coming at you next. Okay, leading internet sources will tell you that Paul McCartney, composer and bassist of the Beatles, lived from June 1942 to present. But if you believe the rumors, he actually died in 1966, and the present Paul is a look-alike. Yes. Dun, dun, dun! Some cite the frog song as evidence that he's a different person to the one who wrote yesterday, but as with most conspiracy theories, there's more to it if you dig a little deeper. According to the score, to the uh, according to some, there's a wealth of evidence that Paul is actually dead. All right, so here are the top ten signs. Number ten, the walrus was Paul. Here's a bit of disappointing one to start with. The clue comes from the song Glass Onion on the White Album when John Lennon sings, well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. Theorists got excited over the mention of Paul in the lyrics and rumors started flying that walrus was a Scandinavian word that meant death. Unfortunately, this gets a little tricky here, a little digging reveals that the word is derived from an old Norse, Rossumvar, which means walrus. Sorry, folks, doesn't yeah. mean death. Not true, sorry. So the next one, Billy Shears. If oh, you're yeah. Remember, yeah, if you remember uh, uh, Sergeant Peppers, yep. they introduced Billy Shears. Well, there is actually a William Shears, and he won a Paul McCartney lookalike contest. So that's where this one comes from. This clue, uh, or yeah, this clue, all the tie ties in with the man who is said to have replaced Paul, William Shears Campbell. He was the winner of the 1965 Paul Lookalike competition. When the band was announcing the arrival of Bill, Billy Shears at the start of Sgt. Peppers, they actually introduced the new version of Paul. Right, they called him Fall. <laughs> uh, it's also a bit of a wordplay, Billy Shears, can be willfully misheard mis as Billy's here instead of Billy Shear. Oh my gosh, that's drawing it, grasping at straws. Yeah. Uh, apparently there's a picture of the real Billy, which is, we'll show here. Uh, it appears on a poster that was given away with the White Album, and he had plastic surgery to look more like the real Paul. Still, Die Hard fans claim to notice the differences between Paul and Billy Shear whom they christen Fall. Some even say that there's a two inch height difference and the color of his eyes has changed as recently as 2010. All right, so how about the Magical Mystery Tour, the album, the cover art? An obscure one is next from the fittingly obscure Magical Mystery Tour EP. On the cover, the word Beatles is spelled out in stars. However, if you put a mirror up to it, it comes up with a number, 231-7438. What's the significance of that number? Well, it's meant to be the telephone number of a London mortuary, but there's no evidence that anyone ever called this number to find out. Now, the clues don't end here, though. There's a cartoon of Paul with a cracked head labeled the fool on the hill there's a picture of all four beetles where paul is wearing a black carnation and all the others wear red i remember that so do i and then there's a picture of paul sitting in front of a poster that says i was enough yet mm. don't worry because there's more <laughs> the next clue the song revolution nine uh, this track from the White Album is largely inexplicable with its strange gibberish, strange noises, and Yoko Ono droning... Number, number nine, nine! Number nine! Yeah, number 
your name over and over and over again. It's like somebody wouldn't pick up their order at the delivery. Yeah. <laughs> at Taco Bell, probably. Number nine, your order's ready. Uh, but again, it contains clues that point to Paul's demise. Lyrics like, his voice was low and his eye was high and his eyes were closed and intended to die are meant to refer to Paul. But the real giveaway is when you play it backwards. There's the noise of a car crash, a scream, and then the repeat, repeated phrase, turn me on dead man. Hmm. Anybody play that backwards? I did. It's, is that what it says? Honest to God, when this was all going down, it was at its height in 1969, so I was about 10 years old, and I had a buddy that, uh, Fassler is his name, you know Fassler. Oh, yeah. And he and I would go through all of these clues almost every single day, um, and that included playing records backwards. And you literally could hear demonic sounds, and you would hear these things that they're talking about, uh, turn me on dead man, and I think, um, a little bit later on, in uh, one of the Sar Sergeant Pepper songs, he says, I buried Paul, uh -huh. which, which he claims, John Lennon, he said, cranberry sauce. Hmm, not exactly the same, is it? My dog makes this look a lot. <laughs> All right, lyrical prophecy. A little bit of a red herring is next. Many conspiracy theory sites list the lyric I was alone, I took a ride, I didn't know what I would find there, as another pointer. But the theory collapses under scrutiny. That line was taken from Got to Get You Into My Life, a track from Revolver. Revolver was released on the 5th of August, 1966. That is a full three months and four days before Paul's supposed accident. Wow. Accident. So oh, you can candy. kind of rule that out, that yeah. that was any kind of thing. But I will tell you, in doing this research today, I found many articles on this top topic that say that the Beatles knew exactly what they were doing when they did this. Brian Epstein was their manager, and he came up with this idea, and, and he saw what happens when musicians have great success after death. And so we thought, what if we put that spin on with the Beatles and one of them is dead? So they went to each one of them. They went to Ringo first because he was the most popular Beatle in America. And, and he was having nothing to do with it. He didn't, he didn't want anything to do with it. George Harrison, pretty much the same thing. He said, no, thank you. I don't want to live with that the rest of my life. So it came down to Paul or John. John no one would really believe it because he just was such a, he had such a bad attitude. And Paul was so popular and he volunteered. Hmm. He actually volunteered to be the one that was dead. And to the point that he went to some place in Scandinavia to a farm that he owned, so he just disappeared for a while. He just went away for a while. Eerie. Yeah. yeah. So um, believe me, they knew what they were doing to sell records. Yeah. So the next clue is from the album Yesterday and Today. They call it the Butcher cover. This is really morbid. It, it's a little bit of a disturbing album cover. Uh, it provoked its own controversy all, all by itself. Product of the photo shoot with Robert Whitaker, the gruesome picture adorned a clumsily put together compilation of Beatles tracks from various albums aimed at the American market. Uh, when it was released in the U.S. on June 20th, 1966, the cover causes immediate outrage and new covers were sent out to stick over the old ones, featuring Paul in a trunk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a few years later, both covers would be uh, raked for, rake yeah. for clues, such as decapitated head in Paul's lap and the way that Paul seems to be in a coffin. There was one problem. Have a look at the date of release. Yes, again, it was before. I know, but, and you know, this, this whole controversy, it, it circled the globe almost instantly, and these were in the days before we even had the internet. How did that happen so fast? You know what, this was the, this was the world's most popular band in, that, in those days. 
Uh, and just like anything else, boy, rumors, rumors spread, uh, even, even truths spread quickly. Uh, radio stations would play it. It yep. was really, it was catching on. This is, the radio stations is where this actually all started. And doing further research, I found that um, this got leaked to colleges. The Beatles got it leaked to colleges. And one student who worked at a college, I think it was in uh, Delaware, uh, called the radio station and was put on the air talking about these clues. And it just took off from college to college to college. Let's talk about Linda Eastman, Paul's wife, and some say the love of his life. This was a cruel but plausible fan theory that points to Paul becoming Paul. Paul had been in a relationship with actress Jane Asher for three years prior to the accident, and they were living together. Two years later, he was marrying Linda Eastman, with the smallest of gaps in between women. Paul's fans, who George referred to as apple scruffs, were skeptical about his choice of bride and sneered at awkward Linda, who had none of the poise of Jane. When Paul's death was uncovered, many people took his change of personality as evidence it wasn't the same guy who dated Jane. Oh. He also withdrew from London and, as I said, spent time with his family and sheepdog on a remote Scottish farm. You know what, I'll give him credit for this though. She can't sing a lick, but she is in the background of a lot of his songs. She plays a mean tambourine. <laughs> and you know, people get degrees in tambourine. <laughs> yes. All right, next up. So this next one, this is probably my, my favorite album cover art. Uh, it's the Abbey Road cover art. Uh, the cover art of the Beatles' last recorded album is supposed to be blatant proof of Paul's death. The iconic walk across the zebra crossing is meant to be Paul's funeral procession. I walked across that. Did in, you? In London, England, yeah. Wow. Uh, with George as scr in scruffy denims as the grave digger. Yep. Uh, barefoot Paul as the corpse. Ringo as the pallbearer in black. And all white John as the preacher. Then it said that if you zoom in on a car license plate, it reads 28IF. 28 is Paul had uh, two eight. Paul had lived. It can be argued that Paul would have been 27, not 28, in 69. But Eastern religions include months spent in utero as part of someone's age, and the Beatles were very involved in Eastern religion at the time. Uh, the first part of the license plate, L M W, stood for Linda McCartney Weeps. Oh please! Uh, probably the most famous set of clues, but. Not the most compelling. No, and then finally that brings us to our number one, and I know all of you remember this album cover, the Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club Band cover art with uh, hundreds of people on the front and a drum, a bass drum in the middle. The album that introduced Billy Shears was bound to be a treasure trove of visual clues, especially considering the famously complicated cover art. Some clues are more convincing than others, but there are a lot of them. A floral wreath spells out Beatles with a bass guitar with only three tuning pegs indicating that only three Beatles were left alive. Mm. There's an open palm behind Paul's head, a symbol of death in some societies, and a tiny Aston Martin representing the car he was driving in the apparent crash. There's a picture of the four early Beatles, and they seem to be looking into a grave. Meanwhile, inside Paul wears an armband with the initials OPD said to stand for officially pronounced dead. However, that's not what it said. It was just because of the ca uh, camera angle. It's a, a Canadian Mountie patch that they use. Oh, yep. Okay. And you couldn't see the letter uh, D, but it says OPP, not D. Um, and Paul faces backwards on the back of the album cover and George's thumb points to the line. Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins, which is supposed to be the time of the accident. You know, just like today, there's a lot of fake news going around back then, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And spreading really fast. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, I there's there's no real evidence to substantiate this, and as far as I'm concerned, we're dealing with the real Paul McCartney. Uh, you know what? I there's no way to imitate that voice. He has one of the most distinctive voices uh, ever. 
and so I can hear him, I can hear him on any album, I can hear a Beatles song where three of them are singing, and I can pick out Paul's voice. Yeah. I mean, it's that distinctive. So, he's alive, I'm sorry, he's, he's one of the last, uh, last two alive. Yes. And, he has new music coming out very soon. Does he? Yes, two singles are about to be released, and it's called, well, I'll, I'll put it right down here, and you'll see the name of it. Uh, on our episode that comes And out. I have to be honest, I'm one of the biggest Beatles group fans in the world, but I've not always been a fan of his solo career. Some of his stuff was a little bit... Poppy. Yeah, a little poppy. Uh, but then again, uh, like, Live and Let Die, I thought was amazing. Well, if I had to narrow it down, I could not pick my favorite Beatles song. I really couldn't. There's no way. There's just too many. Yesterday is such a, a timeless classic. Yeah. Iconic. But my favorite McCartney song, Maybe I'm Amazed. Oh, yeah. He played every instrument yep. on every song on that album. Uh, his first as he passed from the Beatles and moved on to his solo career. I mean, he's probably the most prolific musician in the band, uh, but... Equally, I mean, George Harrison was an amazing guitarist, so... Oh, no doubt. He had clapped it, you know, really set the field. Yes, yep. Um, yeah. So, so I think we can put the whole thing to bed. Paul's alive and well. Yeah, but at the time, in 1969, it meant a lot to me. I can remember that. Yeah. It really did, and I, I was devastated to even think that that was the case. All right, that brings us to the conclusion of another episode of Men Are So Freaking Smart. And uh, if you'd like any more information on us, Ronnie, where would they find that? Right down below. Right In here. In the description? Yeah, right there. Okay. There's also a subscribe button. Where's that? Uh, I don't know where. Right there. Oh, up, up the right. right. Okay, right. got it. Right. All right. right. We're coming to you from Stingray's Marina in beautiful uh, nice, nice Landing. Man. And we are on the river tonight. Uh, we experienced a very, very hot day in Sacramento today. Ooh. Temperature is somewhere around 103 or 104. Scorcher. And I have to tell you, after a really hot day like today, coming out here and being in this beautiful weather uh, with so all nice. of the scenery around here, there's just so much to do. And you know what? Hotter tomorrow. Yeah, oh, but tomorrow uh, they've got live music on Saturday. they got a band coming out here tomorrow. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So check it out. Blues band. Uh-huh. Uh, Blue Situation is the name of the band, and uh, on the 30th, it will be the sounds of, help me, Big River Band, that's right, Ooh, I remember, nice. they're good, they are really hot, right. and on this stage right here that where we sit, so we got to get out of here, uh, we got stuff to do, yes? If you want me to, I can sing a song, or I can play some of my recorder. Okay, well, we'll try to make time for that. Yeah, yeah. When, when everybody's hammered. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got a deal. <laughs> oh well, right? Is that your name? No, that's his name. <laughs> All right, we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.